All right, so we are halfway there, living on a prayer, right? Hopefully you guys recognize where that comes from. For today's video, we're gonna do problem 21 to 25. That puts us at the halfway mark of all the problem in the practice CBEST exam. So let's look at this really quickly. Now, just as I'm going through more and more problems, there's gotta be a reason why they have to be as precise as possible in the wording of the problem that doesn't have anything to do with the structure of the problem itself. I have no idea why. So it just ends up being more writing for me. So let's look at this problem really quickly and hopefully you guys can at least tell what topic this problem is covering, right? A sporting goods store is offering a 10% discount on inline skates that normally cost $110.99. How much will the inline skate, see, like you don't need to repeat yourself. How much will the inline skate cost with the discount not including tax? Like anyone's gonna make their life complicated with a standard math word problem by including tax, right? All right, so, <clears throat> so how do we just solve this problem is fairly simple, right? We have this original cost, which is a $110.99, and then we have our 10% off. Now there's two ways, well, many ways to go about it. One way is just to figure out 10% and then subtract it. So you would just do 110.99 times 10%, right? So times 0.1 or just 10% in decimal form, right? And then you would get your number and then blah, blah, blah. Right, and then after that, you get your number and then you subtract it, which is fine. A more simplified approach, I guess you could say, is basically you would have 110.99 times 0 0.9. And the reason for that, and this is probably a more common way of approaching it when you're first learning about percentages, because this is basically saying that out of the original price, which is 110.99, right? You only want 90% of it, right? Cause you're taking off 10%. So that's just a step ahead, right? You can definitely go with the, let's figure out 10% and then subtract it from the original basically price, which is in essence getting 90% of it. So we can just go with this one. So all we have to do is just 110.99 one, one, times 0. 0.9 nine and then you start carrying out the multiplication right the only thing that i can see potentially going wrong if you're not using a calculator or anything is just the fact that the decimal might be off make sure you count the decimals in the end of the multiplication to get it in the correct decimal place so let's look at this really quickly that's going to be one eight and then what is that that's going to be nine eight and then that's going to be well zero and you bring eight and then you have your nine nine i'm doing it very slowly and then of course you have your zero zero zero, zero all, all whatever right and then you have three decimal places boom so it's about that much okay so there it is 99.89 and you can ignore the 0 0.001 but other than that this would be the total price right with the discount not including tax. So hopefully this is a fairly simple problem. I just wanted to point out different ways of approaching this particular percentage problem because either of them is correct, right? You can take it step by step with this one and then subtract, or you can just go nosedive into it with a finding the exact percentage left over that you're looking for. Okay, so there it is. This is our problem 21. Let's move on to 22. And with this problem, another marker dies. <laughs> That's what you would get with all word problems. At the beginning of a class, half the students in the class go to the library. Later in the period, half the remaining students go to the computer lab. If there are eight students remaining in the class, how many students were originally in the class? Now, this is one of those where you can end up making your life a lot e easier just by going backwards, right? Working through this problem in a reverse order, right? You can definitely find the equation and then, you know, solve for X and then figure out what it is and hopefully it equals eight, but why go through the trouble? When you already know the end result is that there is eight students remaining, okay? That's one of the key information. And prior to the eight student remaining, guess what? That was half of the remaining students that went into the computer lab. And prior to that, that was half the number of students in the lab who went to the library. So from there, you just go backwards and backwards again, and then basically you have your answer. So if eight is a rem remaining, and that was because half of them, right, already went to the computer lab, well, all we have to do is given our list of potential answer, let's just, let me write down the entire, I think it was like 12, 16, uh, 24, um, 
32 and I think, I don't know, 40 or something. I think those are the choices. And then all you have to do, right, you can go from eight and go backwards and then just start figuring out which one of these actually matches it, right? So if there are eight students remaining in the class and that was because, you know, half of the remaining student went to the computer lab, then eight, eight, right? So eight plus eight, 16. Oh, interesting, okay. Well, that's one of them. And then before that, remember 16 was half of the number of students who basically did not go to the library. So that means 16 and 16 is 32. Backwards twice, boom. This is most likely our answer. Is it one of the possibility? Yes, there it is. You are good to go. Simple as that, right? Rather than having to go through the trouble of trying to, you know, let's see, half of some number that we don't know X, and then after that we gotta half it again. And so, no, just in certain situations where they basically map out Right, step by step what happened every single phase until the end result, you can always use this wonderful test taking strategy of getting the end result and going step by step backwards and figure out what they're asking originally. So there it is, plain and simple, pretty fairly easy problem, problem number 22. All right, so here's our next problem. This is a fairly simple word problem. The only thing is probably they just word it in a way that could be confusing if you're not used to more financial talk or whatever you want to call it, All right? So the idea is that they give you two different things that you are working with. One of them is just a pay per hour and then they tell you how many hours this guy Peter works, right? And the other one is now all of a sudden they're talking about, oh, how much he earns in a week because that's why they're all of a sudden talking about weekly gross, right? Total he earns in a week. And then your comparison is basically how much increase did he really get? So that's fairly simple. Peter works 38 hours per week and earns a total of $7.25 per hour. His employer gives him a raise that increases his weekly gross to $307.80. What is the increase in Peter's weekly gross? So basically, all we have to do is combine this and this and figure out how much he originally earned per week and then compare it to his new earnings per week, right? So all we have to do is 38 times $7.25, which is, uh, I don't know, what is that? Uh, $275.50, I think. Uh, Check my math. All right, so that's that's about uh, $200, $275.50 was his original weekly gross or weekly income, right? Now his, now his new one is $307.80. So all you have to do is just get $307.80 and then you subtract it, right? You subtract 275.50. And this one's 30 right here. Hopefully you guys can do a quicker math than I can. And that one is what, uh, 20, 25 plus 7 is what, 32? There it is. Okay, plain and simple. So he had an increase of $32.30 basically weekly. Now, be very careful, right? Remember, this is a practice exam, so there's always different ways to change this problem to make it something different, right? This one is nice because they want to make sure that you guys can compare exactly the same sort of uh, comparison unit, right? One of them is talking about week, one of them is talking about hours and how many weeks they earned. The other thing is that after you get this, this is basically how much increase he got weekly. What if they asked you instead of how much increase he got weekly, how much increase per hour, right? So if you got this, then you would have to be able to convert this back and then like compare it per hour. There's two different ways to go about it, right? You can either, instead of worrying about, you know, changing this into 275 and whatever into weekly, you can actually change this back into per hour because, well, we know he's working the same, assuming, right? And then you can figure it out that way. So there's different ways to finagle with a problem that like this so that you know how to get different components if they decide to change it, right? This one is fairly simple, but if they all of a sudden say, how much did he get an increase per hour? Then all of a sudden you have a slightly different approach, right? And of course, you know, they, this is only units. They can change it to week, uh, weekly, monthly, uh, you know, yearly whatsoever. So this kind of problem, fairly standard, fairly simple. Just make sure the only key thing that I can see that potentially could cause problem is that you are comparing apples and oranges, right? Make sure you're comparing to the same thing or if they don't give you two of the same thing, there must be a way to convert it so that you are comparing two of the same thing. That's all it is. Fairly simple problem. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so here's our next problem. Now, hopefully this picture makes it a little more clear. I'm trying to add the little 
bedazzled, right, to make it uh, easier to see. These are the tape that this problem is talking about. Angular, Angular, I don't know, Agri Aguilar, sorry for mispronouncing. Aguilar uh, Manufacturing Company packages a product for shipping by wrapping tape around the packages as shown in the diagram. An additional 10% of the length of tape per package is needed for overlap. What is the total length of the tape needed per package? So there's two things, right? First and foremost, to make sure that it's not really, I want to say it is sort of a parameter problem, but basically you can sort of visualize and make sure you add all the number of tape correctly. And then afterwards, it's a percentage problem because you got to add an additional 10% in length, right? So let's look at this really quickly. All right. Yes, this is only one side. There's the bottom as well. And of course, there's tape going about on the back and then, you know, under and then to the side right here. You can't see and then the bottom, right? So just make sure that you don't forget those when you're calculating. Other than that, it's fairly simple. We just look at one single strip of tape at a time, if that makes it easier, right? We just look at this long one right here. There's only one of them, right? The two sides have two, but then the long one is fairly simple. Uh, well, the long one is going to be five, right? Five right here. And let me see if I can write it all out so it's easier. 5 and this whole thing is 15 and remember there's a back going in the back there's another 5 at the bottom there's another 15 right so you have to be careful of that so basically now you have 5 5 15 15 that's 30 and 10 so that's going to be 40 and that's for that strip alone right now you have two of them so all you have to do is you can calculate one of them and then multiply it by two well this one right here is going to be what 5 this right here this length right here is 10 and of course you have a 5 going down and then you have a sort of a 10 going under it as well, right? So you have a 10, 10, 5, 5. That's 20, 30, right? So that's 30. Now, the thing about this, remember, there's two of them. So technically you have to multiply by 2, which gives you 60 right here. So add them all together, you get a total of 100. Okay, so that's fairly simple. Now. Before you jump into conclusion and think it's 100, remember the problem itself says that you actually need an extra 10% in length. So you have 100 and now you have two ways of going about it, right? Find 10% of this, add it on, or if you want to skip steps, 100 times 1.1. And that gets a little confusing because the one itself represents the 100%. The 0.1 is that additional 10%, right? Then you get 1.1 and that basically gives you 100 and 10. So that would be your answer, right? The only thing I could see potentially going wrong is if you accidentally forget, you know, the different size that's not shown in the diagram and then you add incorrectly, that's one thing. The other thing is that you are so quick to actually get all of them added together that we forget that is an additional 10%, right? So that's just the thing I can see that potentially go wrong with this problem. Yes, there's very different ways of going about it. And this one is a fairly simple one just because it's a rectangle. Be wary if they start giving you complicated shapes, which I don't think they will, but it's always good for you to make complicated shapes just to you know test yourself, right? And then understand that if they have additional stuff, make sure you include it. Additional 10%, 15, 20%, I don't know, whatsoever, right? Chances are, if this is the situation, they're not going to take percentage away. But as you saw in the previous problem, there can be situation of doing that. So be very comfortable in finding the original, right? And either taking percentage off or adding percentage based on the problem itself. And then once you get comfortable with that, that's probably the bulk of the percentage problem that you will ever encounter in relation to this specific exam. All right, our final problem for today is a fairly simple problem. You have a sign, which, you know, we barely pay attention to it nowadays, right? But basically, usually we have these signs that tell us how far away we are from either a specific city, a specific exit, so on and so forth when you're driving, right? So, Arturo, I'm terrible with this. Arturo is driving at the speed of 50 miles per hour. At 2 o'clock, he sees this following sign. Usually when you see that sign, that's basically where you are pinpointed, right? And then how far away these things are. You have Applebee's 11 miles, View View uh, 41 miles, and Canaan 62 miles, and Denton uh, 98 miles, right? Arturio continues at the same speed. At 2.30, how far is he from uh, Canaan, right? So basically, it's just gathering information, understanding the problem, and then basically doing simple subtraction. Because at this current point, right, at two o'clock, he sees this sign. That's how far away he is at compared to each and every one of these destinations, right? So at 2.30, that means he's driven another half an hour, right? So 
what do we know? We know the speed is 50 miles per hour. And since he's going half of it, right, half an, half an hour, instead of at the full 50 miles, he's basically going half of that, about 25 miles. So that's how much he traveled. Mile travel. Okay, so that's the key, right? Just be very careful of how much time passed because guess what? If it's an hour, if it's three o'clock, then yes, he's driven 50 miles. If it's half of that, then he's driven basically, well, half of it, 25 miles. And of course, there are potential where maybe he's driven 15 minutes, 45 minutes. That's probably the more common ones that they would choose, right? Or just 10 minutes, 20 minutes, right? There's so many ways to change this problem. The, the key is just how long was he driving? And that determines the total distance he's actually covered since seeing this sign. Well, if we know, at least for this particular problem, he only went half, so that's 25 miles travel. Now, how far away would he be from Canaan, right? So, well, originally at two o'clock, he's 62 miles away. So he traveled another 25 miles. So all you have to do is a simple subtraction problem, 62 minus 25. What's that? That's 40, 37. There it is, right? 37 miles away. And that's plain and simple, right? So once again, this is a fairly simple problem. Just gather, gather the appropriate information and then figure out what it's asking, right? And again, the key thing to practice is change the time. The time itself will determine the different distance and with that different distance, of course, you can also change the distance as well. But I mean, I, that, that's minor subtraction, right? The key is understanding the whole rate of travel, right? Rate of speed or whatever you want to call it, speed per mile per hour, and then you can change it to kilometers if you really want to, so on and so forth. But that's the whole point of this particular problem. Nothing too complicated. All you have to do is just make sure you get all the information and then you are good to go. All right, so there we have it. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we are finally halfway there, right? We've gone through a number of different word problems. I've sacrificed the lives of very good black pen markers, right? But overall, hopefully you guys are starting to see a trend, a pattern with all of these problems. A lot of them doesn't matter of the freaking wording of the problem, right? They make it very complicated for no reason. And they try to be as detailed as possible for, you know, common sense kind of understanding of or interpretation of the problem, right? You don't need to specify exactly every single details. That's why my marker died. All right. Anyways, that's just my little rant. Hopefully you guys see the different structures. And once again, it's not just to give you guys the answer. It is to provide you guys a foundation of taking problems like this, changing it up so that you can truly grasp the topic. Because once you can grasp the subject, the topic, right, that they expect in regards to this exam, you will blow it out of the waters. So thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. And since we're halfway there, just another 25 problem, and you will never have to see these kind of see best word problem again. And guess what? I'll be happy if you're not, because only so many pens should be sacrificed for something like this. All right, all right, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.